All right, so we have come to the point where I get to geek out a lot about this process because we are going to go over what real change actually looks like, what the cycle looks like, and we can figure out where you are in the cycle and where you need to be going next. Now, I can kind of already guess where you probably are, but let's go over them and let's see if you can decide where you are. Through this, you're probably going to be like, Leanne, I'm not a psychology student. Why the heck do I need to know this? It's important for you to know where you are so that you can really figure out where you're going. And you can prepare and know that things are actually going to happen. We're going to take a little while to get there, but let's start. So, real change. I first want to talk about the timeline. All right, real change. If you want to create real lasting change, if you really want to create a behavior that's going to serve you, then I need to get rid of some myths first. How long, I want you to think about, and I want you to think about what you've heard in the media, what you've allowed yourself to believe, how long do you really, truly, honestly, if you were to make a change, believe it would take for that to become a natural habit? How long do you think that would take? So in the media, I could tell you right now, even in some programs that I've done, people have told me that it would take three weeks to create a habit. Well, that's not what modern psychology tells me. That's not what the psychology of years and years and years of study have actually told me either. I have a specialty in behavioral change and I can tell you right now that we have been dismayed for a long time because someone had a good intention of trying to get us to start a habit and they just wanted us to start and the actual time it takes to change a behavior was overwhelmingly long. So we've been told it's three weeks, we've been told 21 days. It takes three weeks to change a habit. You can do this, you can do this. Three weeks isn't that long of a time. Unfortunately, three weeks isn't a long time. Three weeks is not a long, long enough time to actually create real change that's going to change your life and create a lifestyle habit for you. The real amount is six, six months. Six months. It takes six months. And I'll when I, when I go over this, I'm going to tell you where that six months actually plays a role. So f six months. That So we've been told that only an eighth of what real change actually takes is what change takes. We've been told that it's been three weeks, but in reality, it's been six months. And that's why, that's why we get to the end of three weeks. We've done all these habits for these three weeks. And then all of a sudden, boom, we fall off. And we feel like we have to start over again, right? Yeah, it stinks and it's wrong. And we've really been led this May and that, then that it's given us a sour taste in our mouth towards the fitness industry. It's given us a sour taste. It came from a really good intention. It really, really did. Because somebody just wanted to get you started. And it is possible to get into habits or a habit or so in about three weeks, you feel like you've been consistent. You kind of might want to keep it going, but three weeks, as you know, can go like that. And so can six months. So I'm going to give you a little bit of hope there because I want you to think about what six months ago was while you're watching this video. So for instance, for me, it felt like new year's was like yesterday. It is now October 2nd. <laughs> it's a lot more than six months. And the other problem is with a lot of habits that, that in you know, a lot of programs, unfortunately, is that people try to go all in. They wait until there's an absolute emergency. They need to lose weight. They need to make something happen quickly. And unfortunately, they need to change 12 habits all at once. And unfortunately, that's not how behavior change works either. You need to change one habit at a time, six months at a time. So think about it. Two years from now, you could create four really amazing habits for yourself. But if you try to change four habits all at one time, the likelihood that they're all stick will not work. So you really have to think long term here for what you really want for your life. Do you really want that energy? And now we're going to really see if I've already lost you or where you are here. I can already tell. So we're going to start pre contemplation. I'm kind of going to scribble here pre contemplation stage. This is stage one. This is stage one. All right, I'm gonna be a little messy. It might not make a lot of sense. I don't know how to spell really well, and so I scribble. <laughs> so pre-contemplation state. These are uh, the kind of thoughts that this kind of person has are none whatsoever towards the change. So for instance, it's that, it's that friend or that person you know in your life who's extremely overweight. I'll give you a very easy example. Extremely overweight and has no care whatsoever to lose weight. They're in their behaviors. They're really content with their life. They don't have a fear of being sick. They, they feel fine. Uh, they're, they're totally okay with being the way that they are. 
they're in the pre-contemplation stage. They're not, con- they're not contemplating. They're not thinking about moving forward or changing a behavior whatsoever, right? Pre-contemplation stage. So you are obviously not in this category. The type of, emo- there's no real emotions towards the change here in this category. There's no real thoughts of a change in this category. You obviously are not in the stage because you bought this program, right? You bought this, you bought the, the five root system. So what's the next stage? What do you think? You start thinking about it, right? Contemplation. That's stage two. In the contemplation stage, you start thinking about it. Should I, I should probably, I should maybe lose some weight. This is where you're on that teetering fence. Should you, should you not, right? This is where you're on that fence. You're not really sure. Uh, and you start thinking about all the different reasons as to why and all the reasons as to why not. You start eating the cupcake and while you're eating, you're like, this is the reason why I am not, I don't want to lose weight because I really enjoy this moment right now. <laughs> Those are the kind of thoughts that you start to have, right? And then you might also start to have thoughts like, okay, if I do make this decision, this is something I'm going to have to give up. This is something that I'm going to have to move away from. And you really start to have those thoughts. Am I strong enough to do that? Those are the kind of thoughts that you start to have in that contemplation stage. You're really thinking of the possibility of making a change. You don't really, you start to really become aware of the things you don't like about where you are right now. And you start to think about what your life could be like if you were to make a specific change. Now, next up. Planning. All right. So to go from stage two to stage three, to make that move, there's a decision here. You decide. You decide. You made a decision. Now, let me tell you something that a lot of people don't understand about this cycle. It's first, first of all, it's a cycle. <laughs> so you'll notice I'm sorry, it'll go back to the beginning, but I'm kind of jumping ahead. Another thing you don't, a lot of people don't realize is that you'll teeter back between these two stages quite frequently. You may even teeter back and forth between these stages before actually making a decision and going into the planning stage. Because what starts to happen is you make a decision, you think it's gonna be easy, you think it, it'll, it'll be okay, you have this idea, people have made you believe as though it's really, really easy, the change that you wanna make. Maybe it's losing 50 pounds. You know, people, you see people working out, you're like, oh, they make it look so easy. And then you go and you try it, you do your first workout, you feel like death, you're sore, you can't move the next day. <laughs> you can't even pick up a bottle of water to drink it, which you know you need to be drinking, right? And then you go right back to contemplation. Is this really freaking worth it, right? I've been there, guys, I get it. Going back and forth between this stage is really natural. Unfortunately, that's what people, that's, Unfortunately, people don't give themselves enough of a break. And that's where the guilt trip starts to happen. They believe that once they make a decision, hey, they're a coward if they go back. Well, I told everybody that I was going to do this. I didn't realize it was going to be this hard. And the guilt trip starts to happen. And you start thinking about what everybody else is going to think when you feel like you're quitting. Well, what the prob- problem really was... You just picked the wrong plan. Making the decision to change the behavior wasn't the wrong decision. The decision lied in what plan you decided to go with. So there's hope. All right? We just got to find you the right plan. And you'll still you'll go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until you find a plan that really, okay, okay. You'll find a plan that's like, oh, oh, I could do this one. This one's cool. I'm getting the results I want and the time frame that I want. I'm, I can make it happen. So, actually, I was kind of a, a talking a little bit about this stage already. This is stage four. This is the golden stage. Da, 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 da. This is the part that's the hardest. The action stage, right? So, you're actually starting to do things. You go grocery shopping. You start working out. So... Is it possible, let me ask you this question, is it possible to go from this stage all the way back here? Absolutely. So like I said, you did your workout, you planned, 
Maybe you picked a program really quick because you were on fire. You're ready to go. You made this decision. So you jumped right from here all the way to here. And oh my gosh, you made the wrong decision. Now, let me tell you something. If you ever think you're going to go through life not making a wrong decision, I'm going to tell you. You're going to make some wrong decisions. I'm sure you already know about a few and you've learned from them. This is another place where you can make a lot of wrong decisions. And it's okay. I'm with you. I've done it. I've made some really bad choices. I've done some actions. I've committed to these actions. And then I went right on back to the planning and the drawing board here and really contemplated whether or not this was something I really wanted to do. Being so heartbroken right here, either not getting the results I wanted or not finding something that actually fit into my life, something that was so hard and so against the type of lifestyle I actually wanted to live. It was so intense that it brought me all the way back over here. I'll tell you an example for myself. Competing in a show, in a bikini show. I did it. Oh boy. When you can't even have a little dab of ketchup, that's when you really start to get, um, or you feel guilty about a little dab of ketchup, that's when you really start to start to recontemplate whether you want to compete or not. All right, you really think about that decision you made and you think about the plan that you did. When you're a vegetarian and you decide to compete, and your whole plan is full of meat, and you start getting sick because you haven't had meat in months, you start to realize you made a bad decision. <laughs> okay? So I've been there. I've done it in a few different ways, especially with losing weight too. So this is where the bread and butter is. Okay? After you do this for six months, consistently, the same thing for six months, that's when you can go ahead and move maintenance the maintenance phase that's where it becomes a lifestyle okay that's that's where that lifestyle lays but this takes six months and that's where the red flag kind of comes up six months it takes six months of action to even get to the maintenance stage action is kind of where you're you're it's action you're doing stuff towards it and then you have the maintenance stage where you're taking care of it and it's easy. And maybe you take one day off or whatever and you take two days off, but it's easy to get back right back into. It's very really easy to get back into. For instance, I feel really weird when I don't work out for two days in a row. One day is okay because I, I built that into my schedule where I get one day off. I'm usually bopping around playing outside, frolicking in the grass, playing sports or something, but I'm taking off from strategic workout, strategic plan there, all right? I've gone into the maintenance stage. It's very easy for me to maintain the lifestyle. It's not a cognitive thing I have to do. Remember, the next video we're going to talk about that neural pathway again. I, I kind of already touched on it in the previous videos, but this is where you've recreated that neural pathway, and that's why it takes six months. Now, if you're a baby, it might take three weeks, but for somebody who has all these previous behaviors and all this previous neural pathway that you need to tear down and build a new one it's reconstruction site it's going to take a good six months to do that because not only are you creating a behavior but you got to get rid of other ones too now you're starting to get i hope you're really starting to get it because this is very simple it's not complicated it's not complicated but it's really important for you to understand where you are so where are you right now are you in that action stage do you find yourself daily going back and forth <laughs> back and forth back and forth right you know, action back to planning, action back to planning. You know, maybe your action, unfortunately, your program wasn't six months long. So you needed to find another program. So you had to go from action back to planning. And if you're not planning while you're in action, you might have to start back over. The worst thing you can do is set a plan that's maybe three months and you don't have a plan for after those three months. Or set a plan for three weeks and you don't have a plan for after the three weeks. It is absolutely wonderful to have a six-month plan and then break those goals down to three-week plans. But you have a six-month plan. You know you're in for the long haul. You know that you're committed for at least this amount of time. This is the minimum requirement for behavior change, guys. So this Route 5 is going to take six months. It could even take longer because it is five brand new behaviors if you don't have any of them in place right now. 
the majority of you, you probably have one, two, maybe three of them in place right now. And you actually realized you were in a better place than you thought. And you realized you were guilting yourself and you were going back to the planning board when you didn't really need to because you were acting exactly how you were supposed to. But media told you that you weren't taking the proper action. Did you notice exercise wasn't in there? <laughs> Believe me, I'm, the, I'm a personal trainer. Exercise is extremely important. But not for you to be healthy, not for you to lose weight. It's not necessary. It's absolutely beneficial for your body. And I, it's, I think it's an absolute bonus. And I think everybody should do it. But is it where you need to start? Is it the foundation that you need to lay? Absolutely not. Is it one of the first behaviors that you should create? Absolutely not. Sleeping that uh, the right amount, those root five, and then sleeping would actually come next above working out. In all honesty. Sleeping would come before exercise, in my opinion. All right. A little off track. It's okay. That's how I kind of operate. You get little nuggets thrown in there, little freebies. Hey. So maintenance. Okay. Here's the deal. See how this circle, this pattern here? Yeah, it's going to go back. Because you're going to go through maintenance. You're going to be maintaining, maintaining a certain lifestyle. So for instance, when we talked about timing in the first module, I used to do the every two to three hours. I was maintaining it. But it was a struggle, man. It was annoying. I, it would kind of like put a sour taste in my mouth. And I was just, I was bored. I was bored. And I wanted something different. And I wanted different results. I wanted to feel a little bit different. I wanted to try something new. I wanted change. And that's what brought me back to pre-contemplation. Brought me back. Because then when you're in that maintenance stage, now you're on autopilot again. But with good behaviors. Not bad behaviors. Ooh, did you catch that? See, it is embedded into our language. Not behaviors that serve us, but behaviors that aren't serving us. They're doing the opposite from the direction we want to go. I got bored and I didn't realize it. And then I started contemplating, oh, what, maybe there's some new ways. And then I started planning. And then I went through the cycle pretty quick again because I've already been through it. But if you've never fully been through this cycle with anything, it's going to be a long little journey. And you're going to go backwards, and you're going to go forwards, and you're going to go backwards, and you're going to go forwards. And there's even times when you jump all the way from maintenance all the way back down to planning, or all the way back to contemplation. And that's why people think that they're starting from square one, but they're forgetting that they have all of this behind them. They have all of this experience already. So imagine this being a pie chart. You already have 95% of it done. And then just because your thoughts change and you want to you want to restart or change something or try something new, you think that you go all the way back to the beginning. No, 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 no. You're starting over just in a new direction. And something that is very so this is all relapse, relapse. Very natural part of this cycle. Relapsing is extremely, extremely natural in this cycle. So stop beating yourself up. I really hope that you guys gleaned a lot off of this. I hope that you learned a ton. I hope you know where you are and where you're going next. Let me know. I'm super pumped to know. I'm super pumped to find out. You're never a bother. I'm always blessed when you guys reach out to me. Super, super excited to see where you are and where you're going. And I will talk to you next about neuropathways. <laughs>